Only one question about this episode. How does a vlogger in the 38th century, the 38th century, have a crappier webcam than I have in my pocket? Roll titles. Oh, wait. <laughs> there, are, there are no titles this week. Okay. Okay, roll a screen full of letters. That will have to do. So let's start here as we do. Spoilers. Spoilers. You can't unsee them. Although I'm not sure I'm even capable of spoiling anything, I barely comprehend what happened in this episode. There are bits missing. Sorry about that. I don't fully understand what's been going on here, but um, this is what happened. A bunch of monsters made out of ice sand ran around an orbiting space station killing people, threatening a larger genocide on the planet below, which was not a planet but a moon of Neptune called Triton. This went on for a while until the doctor figured out the blah 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 of the week and put a stop to it. Until next time, I'm... No, just kidding. I've got more to say. I do have more to say. Ice sand? Sleep No More, Episode 9 of Series 9 of Doctor Who, written by Mark Gatiss, a guy who is very much in demand as both actor and writer, partner with Stephen Moffat in creating Sherlock. I want more Sherlock, please! Gatiss has been writing for Doctor Who since the 2005 revival. His best episodes are high on creepiness and unease. They're like little horror films. <laughs> this is one of those. Directed by Justin Malotnikoff, first time with the franchise, he has done eight episodes of Merlin and eight of Atlantis, a bunch of other stuff. Mr. Gatiss gave Mr. Malotnikoff quite the challenge this week, and I'll get to that shortly. Good, solid sci-fi premise in this episode, one that I personally relate to. We are not getting enough sleep. I'm not. I've been pulling all-nighters since high school. I only sleep in business meetings. And now that I'm retired, I have to go to rock concerts to sleep. Yes, yes, I once slept through a Rolling Stones concert. I also fell asleep during the movie Inception, which I'm convinced is the best way to see that film. I kept nodding off. I may be the only person on the planet who thought Inception was a documentary. Remember, kids, lack of sleep is a serious health and mental health issue. Don't wind up like your Uncle Nicola. Go and get your Zs. Now, Mark Gatiss came up with a fantasy tech solution for dealing with all work and no sleep. It's a technology he called Morpheus, a pod that will infuse the benefits of a full night's sleep if you just spend merely five minutes' time in it. Perfect. I want that. Of course, you have to know if there's a pod anywhere within 50 feet of her, Clara Oswald will somehow get sucked into it. That's her thing. One five-minute catnap a day, augmented by Morpheus, what could possibly go wrong? Ah, uh, eye sand is the answer you're looking for there. Eye sand. The goobers that form in the corner of your eye as you sleep. Get enough of that stuff in one place, and apparently you have a monster on your hands. Who knew? Well, we know the drill by now. Base under siege by menacing creatures. The crew gets picked off one by one as the doctor races against time to analyze and neutralize the threat. The solution usually involves some combination of running, slamming doors and hatches, cracking wise, and muttering techno babble. Been there, done that. But didn't we just have our base under siege episode for Series 9, Under the Lake? This one, however, is different. Doctor Who goes Blair Witch, found footage. The conceit is that the episode is not produced by a professional crew at BBC Wales in Cardiff. Instead, it was assembled in orbit around Triton by the villain himself, a guy named Rasmussen, a vlogger, played to charming, creepy perfection by Rhys Shearsmith. Vlogger as charming creep. Hmm. When has that ever happened? I kept waiting for him to pull out a ukulele. Rasmussen tells us he used footage taken by the crew of the besieged space station themselves. They all have helmet cams to piece together what we're seeing. I have to say, he's a pretty good editor. That Rasmussen, good editor. So... We're not actually watching an episode of Doctor Who. We're watching Rasmussen's blog. That accounts for the lack of opening credits and why we don't have Ron Grainer's famous theme. It also accounts for the fact that the episode neither begins nor ends with the Doctor on the TARDIS. He and Clara just sort of wander into it and then wander out of it. It's Rasmussen's show. It also accounts for the fact that we don't hear any incidental music from Murray Gold. Well, how can we know what to feel without Murray Gold? There's my Murray Gold! I think they gave him the week off, that's my guess. What a neat creative exercise for director Justin Malotnikoff, cinematographer Mark Waters, and film editor Mike Jones. Unlike Lair Witch, which was just the point of view of a single camera, Sleep No More is supposed to combine first-person footage from each of the crew members, as well as footage from fixed cameras around the station. Imagine the complexity of to storyboard and shoot and edit that. Did they pull it off? I think they did, but I have to say, 
I admired the episode a bit more than I enjoyed it. All these shaky cam found footage deals make me a little dizzy. I saw the Blair Witch Project opening weekend. What a hot ticket that was. It was sold out. I had to sit in the second row. Oh, mercy. My, did I check every shot of this episode to be sure it's consistent with the premise? Or with the twist that it was not actually shot by the helmet cam, but shot by the sand itself? No, I did not. The internet is filled with nerds who will do that for you. Track them down if you care. Still, I applaud the show and Stephen Moffat for continuing to take risks and to innovate. Here's something I didn't expect. I was actually relieved that this episode was about those people in that situation and not larded over with in-jokes and references to things from Doctor Who in the 60s and the 70s. Until this week, I didn't realize how tired that's getting. Let me list a few of the things about the script that I completely enjoyed. I love that Mark Gatiss built a monster around an insipid but unforgettable earworm of a pop song from my youth. Mr. Sandman, Bring Me a Dream by the Cordettes, impersonated here by the holographic song stylings of Natasha Patel, Elizabeth Chong, Nikita Chadha, and Gracie La. Unlike the original Cordettes, this quartet is Asian, which is another bit that makes Gatiss' script so deliciously subversive. He considers that by the 38th century, there will be a major geopolitical power shift. Usually, when Doctor Who is set in some distant future, it's just England. England with different sets and costumes. But in Sleep No More, the global power center has shifted to Asia, reflected in the casting. Of course, what Gatiss giveth with one hand, he taketh with the other. In his 38th century, India and Japan are underwater. Gatiss has said in an interview he wanted to avoid getting too close to the larger arc of Series 9 and learning about the fate of Clara, but Stephen Moffat gave him just one little note about the series arc, which led to a short scene where the Doctor and Clara quarrel about who gets to name the monsters. That echoes conflicts we've seen in earlier episodes where there seems to be a brewing power struggle between them. Well, we'll know soon enough what that's building towards. Once again, and I say this every week, once again, Peter Capaldi. Peter Capaldi. Okay, twice again. Outstanding. Every moment of screen time, he just commands your attention. And the rapport that Capaldi and Jenna Coleman have developed over their time together is really tight. The show will miss that. The program, which has long been strong in diversity casting, passed another milestone in bringing on transgender comedian and actress Bethany Black. She plays 474, The Grunt. And wouldn't bother that the first role played by a transgender woman in the show is a mindless clone? Any backlash on that? An extra twist ending. Spoiler? The Doctor fails. Rasmussen, Sly Dog, has embedded the code for the Sandmen into the signal of the video we have just watched. Despite the Doctor's best efforts, the world will end anyway. We are all infected. Pleasant dreams. Until next time, I'm Mikola. DVD extras. I'm sorry I'm late with this one. I have a note from my power company. Just at the moment I was ready to turn on my lights the other day, the power failed. Little background for my fellow Americans. Reese Shearsmith and Mark Gatiss collaborated with a couple of other writer-actors in The League of Gentlemen, a project that started 21 years ago. It made its way through stage, radio, television, and cinema, including three TV series on BBC One. Gatiss wrote the part of Rasmussen specifically for Reese Shearsmith. More background from Mark Gatiss in this interview. Look for a link in the doobly-doo. Now, one of the reasons I love the notion of Morpheus so much is that I once invented something almost like it, although mine didn't have monsters. I did it with a friend I know from Apple named Peter Hirschberg. Now, this happened a few years after both Peter and I had left Apple. Peter was doing a demo at a tech conference for a product he was promoting. I think it was a tool for building websites. He wanted his demo to be about a, a website for a fictitious company and he called me up to brainstorm what the company might be. Being as sleep-deprived as I usually am, I suggested this. I proposed a company called The Sleep Bank. The idea was that they would send you a small device called a sleep modem that you could put under your pillow. If you had extra sleep, if you slept late, you could upload your extra sleep to The Sleep Bank. And if you were ever short of sleep, you could download some. You could get your own extra sleep back, or if you didn't have any on file, you could buy some. People would be able to monetize their own extra sleep by uploading it to the sleep bank. It's a cloud solution for sleep deprivation, crowdsourced. All the sleep in the bank would be labeled and priced by quality, restfulness, anxiety, dream. We even had an X-rated section where for just a small premium, you could download a really hot wet dream. Sorry the artwork has all vanished. I wish I could show you some of the pages. By the way, did I hear the doctor say people don't put the word space in front of things? Does, does he know about this? Does he know what we call this thing in Seattle? Google it. Here 
As usual, a crew of other reviewers on this episode, including one I just recently discovered, Harry's Moving Castle. Very sharp mind, very sharp observations. Many of you will recognize the clip I nicked from the brilliant crab sticks, the funniest man on YouTube. Here is the full sketch. Good laughs, just a click away. And if you want more Gatiss and Shearsmith, here is the League of Gentlemen. It's all up on YouTube, all three series, now. And finally, before I take my leave, I have the cornets for you with their 1954 hit, Mr. Sandman, and the just slightly hipper multi-track version by the legendary Les Paul and Mary Ford. Bye now.